For Inventor 2021, when you're in assembly, let's look at the new functionality that's there. First thing we're going to look at is the naming conventions. Now, naming conventions have been there uh, for the past couple of releases for frame generator and routed system or tube and piping. A new one has been added for when you're mirroring or copying inside of your assembly. So let's look at this information. Under Tools, Application, Options, under the File tab, we're going to pick the file name defaults. As you can see, like I said, Frame Generator's been there, then we have Tube and Piping, and then what's been added for 2021 is the Mirror and Copy. So when you're mirroring or copying inside of your assembly, you now have the ability to, to define what those file names are defined as. Another thing that's been changed for 2021, and this is true for frame generating tube and pipe, and we're going to talk about those in here in a few minutes, is the image is now kind of related to what you're seeing inside of your Inventor browser, making it easier to understand that uh, the relationship when you're naming those uh, files, how it's related to your browser. Other things, you can use the file name as a display name. The Add Attribute button has been changed to now it's a plus sign. Other things that's been added, so if we click on the plus sign here, things like now you can do date, date month, date year, those type of things. So you can have additional features added to your naming convention. In Location, you now have the ability to use the Source Path, Workspace, User Path, and so on. If we go over to Frame Generator, again, as you can see, the icons has changed now, making it easier to relate to your files in the browser to that naming convention. Other things that have been added, you now have the ability to do the build material structure for the top assembly. Again, like I said, the Add Attribute button is gone, so we can click on it. Other things you have the ability to now use an assembly unit. So when you're talking about a naming convention that includes units from your model, you can tell it to use from the template or from the assembly. If we go over to tube and piping, things that change, again, like I said, you can see the difference in the images to indicate that relationship between what you're seeing in your model to your naming convention. Kind of the same things, you know, the different options for naming, if we, we're talking about a path, we have the path information. Now, with the tube and piping, now it's starting to break it down into more in-depth look at your naming conventions. In the past, all piping routes were named the same. You now have the ability, based on the type of piping, you know, if, it, if it's rigid piping, flexible tubing, hosing, those type of things, you have the ability to name the folder structure so you can separate all your components out and the individual piping information related to those given types of pipe routes that you're making. And finally, the other thing that I wanted to point out for this tube and pipe naming convention is you have the ability, just kind of like what's been added into the frame generator side of it for 2021, is you, you can control the bill material structure for your top tube and pipe runs and then the bill material structure for your piping runs that you're creating. Let's switch over to frame generator and look at its enhancements for 2021. All of its functions, such as insert frame, have now been switched over to the new properties panel interface. So if we look at the change function, you can see its properties panel, reuse, trim and extend, lengthen and shorten. When we insert a frame, the preview of our structural member is displayed. So if I hover over right now, I'm using an angle iron. And as I hover over my line, you can see that the preview of the angle iron is there to better understand how the shape is represented. As I move toward the other end, you can see that it's flipped because the location where it's being generated from is at the other end. So we're going to click on here to place our member. And as you can see, a new feature that's been added as part of the new properties panel, and these are 
also on the other properties panel of the inventor frame generator function is the zoom zooming commands so i can zoom and set the view perpendicular to the frame manipulator zoom to the frame manipulator so i can click on that and as you can see that it zooms into where i have placed it to make it understand where you are especially when you have a complex frame prior to inventor 2021 when we use the reuse function, the reuse member always had to come from the original member. So let me explain. This member here was placed as an inserted frame member. This member over here was selected to be reused from the original inserted frame member. Now, this member here would be the same as this member and this member. However, prior to Inventor 2021, I always had to use the original inserted frame member to do this. Now, for 2021, I can pick any of the reused members. So I'm going to click on it. And as you can see, when I go to pick this reused member, it's going to highlight where the original inserted frame member came from. And now I can go pick my where I'm going to reuse it. The trim and extend function within a vendor frame generator has been updated for 2021 and allowing the tool or the members to extend or trim to a curved surface. So in my feature, I'm going to select this curved surface as my tool, and then I'm going to select my members to trim or extend to that curved surface. Now, when you trim or extend to a curved surface, it's not actually trimming or extending the end to be part of that curved surface. So if I go into my frame generator member here and turn off its visibility, you can see that the ends of those extended or trim members are kind of like trimmed to the tangency point of that curved surface. They're not actually curved to match that surface. So just keep that in mind. For the notching function in Inventor 2021, under the notch profile, you now have the ability to associate the notching based on a C-style structural shape or a T-style structural shape. So for example, although kind of hard to see, I have two C-channels here that I want to notch out. So I'm going to pick my frame member. So this is the one that's going to get notched. And then I'm going to pick my notching tool, which is this C-style channel. And as you click on the notching profile, I now have the ability to toggle it to a custom C template and provide the notching information that's required.